To be honest, I'm in bad shape. They say I might have to be intubated. If they hook me up, I might not ever recover. I'm trying to use the time to prepare. Putting this all down on paper slowly as best I can, between breaths, which are getting shallower and shallower. It's like I'm drowning on land. I've made some preparations. Some things I just won't get to. So much of it seems unimportant now. I have to face the very real possibility I may die here, alone. I can't have visitors. I definitely don't want to FaceTime with anyone as I'm checking out. It seems like too much to ask of someone. One thing the doc mentioned was I could choose the song to go out to. If it comes to that, can you believe it? Maybe I'm latching onto this because it's less stressful than doling out the meager bric-a-brac of my quote-unquote estate. Somehow choosing one final song has taken over all considerations. It's all I think about. Music's been a big part of my life. All the years haunting record stores, hunting down rare B-sides and 12-inch remixes. Decades searching to get my hands on every available track. Now you type in the name of a song, and there it is. It's a miracle. But I miss the old days. It was more meaningful to have the record in your hand. Examine the artwork. Pull it out of its sleeve. A moment years in the making. For most of my life, I devoured songs the way some people take on food. A connoisseur. A glutton. There was never enough for me. I think of all the mixtapes and playlists I've made, one for every occasion. Attempts to seduce, breakup send-offs, birthdays, remembrances. Some just puzzling out how to say something I couldn't express any other way. That's music, isn't it? Now I've got to choose one last song. There's Death and Glory by The Clash, one of my all-time top three favorite songs. But it's a little on the nose, right? Your very last song, it might be altogether different from your favorite song. Does someone really want to go out to Under Pressure or the Minutemen's Vietnam? Indisputably excellent tracks. Not my favorites, mind you, but you get my drift. The more I think about it, the more I think I want a song that can ease me into oblivion. A lullaby of sorts, right? It all comes full circle, I guess. 1880 or so by television, is so spare and lovely. But should my death be like a candle dimming? Maybe something ambient, an Eno track, perhaps. But most of his stuff is too cold and sterile. Something from another green world would be good. It's electronic and syncopated, but still feels organic. It's an intimate album, like spending time with a very old friend. There's the preamble to Velvet's Sweet Jane. I've always imagined it's what you might hear upon the opening of the pearly gates if you were lucky enough to find your name in the book. I've often wished the intro was longer or would last the entire track, but then it switches gear and moves into those muscular, assured rock chords and becomes something else entirely. It's perfect, but not exactly right. Sometimes I think I want a voice, someone in my ear, someone, someone there to guide me into the ether, you know? Then there's a song that literally saved my life. Not too many people know this story. I was 25, driving cross-country alone. It was a bad breakup. My heart had been shattered into splinters. I really shouldn't have been driving. I'd reached a point where I couldn't stand living another second. It was just too much pain. I don't remember exactly the time, only that it was dark, and I was the only one on the highway. I was going well over 90, Navigating through tears, the needle buried, the roadsides were passing by in a blur. I had one thing on my mind, finding the nearest tree to crash into. Then something strange happened, a voice in the darkness. Billy rapped all night about his suicide, how he'd kick it in the head when he was 25. All the speed jive, don't want to stay alive when you're 25. A familiar voice singing about suicide. On the radio, in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. How do you explain it? Can there be any doubt that song was playing directly to me? A song that said, you're at an age where it's perfectly normal to not want to live. And here's the other thing. I knew it was David Bowie singing. I didn't think there was a David Bowie song I'd never heard. There were few artists I'd loved more than him. And up until that moment, I was pretty confident 
I'd track down everything he'd ever released, even Stranger. The entire night, I couldn't find anything on the damn radio for hundreds of miles, an endless string of the worst country music you can imagine. That and batshit evangelical preachers selling holy water and doom. Then, in the middle of nowhere, some DJ was broadcasting the one song in the entire universe that could snap me out of a suicidal mission. I mean it. I can't think of another song that in that moment could have saved me. Half of it was that I was just so curious to know the name of that song. I mean, knowing the name of this beautiful track was suddenly more important than anything else. I had to keep listening, if only because I couldn't die without knowing the name of that glorious song. The song made me realize there were so many beautiful things to discover out there. Songs never heard, movies never seen, people never met, places never been. If I check out now, what else will I have missed? I snapped out of it, found a motel, and managed to get some sleep. The next day I was still shattered, but at least I didn't want to die anymore. Found out the name of the song was All the Young Dudes, a song Bowie wrote for Mott the Hoople. The version I heard was taken from a double album, Live, that I had somehow overlooked. Turns out the single version of the song would be released as a bonus track in a Greatest Hits compilation later that year. There's so much I would have missed if I had accomplished my mission that night. Too much to go into here. I've had rough spots too, but my final record of good versus bad has been pretty decent. I have a lot to look back on and cherish. What's funny? After all that, all the young dudes, even though it literally saved my life, it's not the last song I want to hear. Oh, You Pretty Things is another Bowie contender. I think it might be my favorite song, but that's not it either. Animal Farm by The Kinks always gives me the chills. In a Silent Way by Miles Davis might be the most beautiful song ever made. Robin Hitchcock's Chinese Bones would make an appropriately surreal sonic vessel to float into the netherworld with. There are worse songs you could choose than the delicate touch of destroyers in dreams. You never give me your money is very dear to me, taking me back to my earliest memories. The Stones' I Am Waiting has an appropriately wintry, end-of-the-world feel to it. Summertime by Galaxy 500 would be like slipping into a beautiful forever coma. After hours of consideration, it struck me. I didn't want any one song to be my last. It would be like choosing a favorite child. It just doesn't seem fair. I carry all that music inside me. Each one has added colors and hues to my canvas of emotions. They help shape my soul. They're all in here, churning, incorporated into a single track. My heartbeat, my breath, as labored as it is. We vibrate with energy. It's music. We are music. Maybe it's the drugs they're feeding me. Maybe I'm getting a little out there, I don't know. Even now, my only regret is the thought of all the great songs I've never heard. The ones being made right now, I'll never have a chance to hear. We're so lucky to have music, no? Hearing, they say, is the last sense that leaves you. For me, that makes perfect sense. And now it looks like my own song might be over. Don't say a prayer for me. Listen to your favorite songs instead.